Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Board Game Museum's Top 100 Vintage Board Games. Today, we're going to be looking at the numbers 30 through 21. So let's do this. Number 30 is a board game called The American Dream from Milton Bradley. Now, in The American Dream, you're going to be trying to make the most amount of money, but there are several different ways that you can make money. Uh, one thing you do is you can buy franchises, and this is going to help increase your uh, salary, which you'll get once you circle the board. You can get stock certificates from a variety of different companies, and they're all licensed companies like Burger King and Goodyear, which is really cool. Um, you can also come up with ideas. You can get copyrights. You can get patents. And another thing you can do is because you're having to look at what your opponent's doing, and then you're trying to figure out, okay, do I want to go this way? Do I want to try to do the franchises and up my salary? Do I want to try to get stocks and make money quick? Uh, how do I want to do this? Because there's so many different ways you can make money. And plus, the number of dice that you roll is also going to affect what's going to happen as well. Really cool game. I really like it a lot. Number 29 is actually three games, and it is in a series. And uh, they are reprints of other games that came out earlier. And this is the Mission Command series. Uh, now there's Mission Command Land, Mission Command Sea, and Mission Command Air. Mission Command Land used to be known as Tank Battle. And ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to destroy your opponent's tanks. You're going to be battling a lot of tanks with die rolls. And uh, each of the tanks are going to have a certain uh, strength. And uh, the cool thing about this game is you're going to have the ability uh, to try to guess where your opponent is going to move when it becomes his turn. And if you're able to guess correctly, they're going to take damage. Uh, you've got tanks you can use, helicopters you can use, you've got artillery. And you also have different buildings that you have to defend too um, because if you end up losing the buildings, you're going to lose certain abilities. Really cool game. Uh, Mission Command Air is a dogfighting game. You've got two different types of jets, and what you're basically going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to shoot down your opponent's plane. A lot of dice in this game. One of the cool features is you can fly off the board and then end up on the other side. Uh, this game used to be called Screaming Eagles, uh, but you've got uh, you can shoot guns at them, you can shoot missiles at them, which you'll be limited in, and you're also going to have cards that you're going to be playing that's going to determine where your plane is going to go. Are you going to veer right? Are you going to veer left? Uh, which way you're going to go. Really cool game, too. Uh, if you like dogfighting games, a really good one. And then Mission Command C is based off of Carrier Strike. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to sink your opponent's carrier. Um, you're going to have uh, access to a lot of planes, and you're going to be doing a lot of dogfighting in here, and you're going to be shooting harpoons into the water to try to reach the carrier. Um, you've also got, I believe, battleships that can shoot down the... the um, the missiles or the harpoons or whatever they're called, but they have to be in range. And the planes are going to be able to shoot uh, enemy fire as well. So there's dogfighting going on, there's harpoons firing going on, and uh, the one thing about this game is those harpoons can reach that carrier rather quickly if you're not careful. So you have to think offensively and defensively in this game. It's almost like there's two games in one with this, but it's a lot of fun, and it's probably my favorite out of the series. But, you know, I like all the other ones too, but it's the Mission Command series. Number 28 is an art auction game, and it is called Masterpiece. Now, in Masterpiece, you're going to have these replicas of famous paintings, and you're also going to be assigning them different value cards, though you're not going to know what the values are um, until you actually get access to the painting. Uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be auctioning with paintings, and you're going to be uh, trying to steal people's paintings. Um, you're going to be uh, doing a lot of different things, and you're trying to make the most amount of money by the time the game ends. Uh, the f funniest thing about this game is when you end up with a, a painting that's a, f a fraud, and someone ends up wanting to bid on that, and they end up getting it, and it turns out to be nothing. Now, a lot of this game involves memory, too, because some of these paintings are going to be moving around the board. Uh, you may end up getting one, and then somebody may end up getting it, and they're going to know how much it is, but so are you. But you're also trying to have to remember which paintings are worth the most. But uh, yeah, the paintings are really cool. It's a very fun game, Masterpiece. Number 27 is a 3M bookshelf game called Acquire. Now in Acquire, you're going to be uh, having options to buy stocks with these different hotels. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing tiles on the board, and then once you're able to make, say, two next to each other, you'll be able to go ahead and place a hotel there. The more tiles that you have coming from a particular hotel, the more it's going to be worth, but eventually two of the hotel's uh, tiles are going to merge together. So that's when you're going to be able to make the money. The one that had the most tiles is going to take over the one that had the least amount, and then you're going to be looking at the stock certificates that you've bought, and whoever has the most is going to get uh, the first amount, and whoever has the second most is going to get the next amount. So a lot of this game is about trying to figure out which hotels you want to buy and what tiles that you have. Um, and 
how much of the stocks you want to buy. There's a lot going on in this game, and it's one of those games that's easy to learn but kind of hard to master. It's a really, really good game. Number 26 is based off a game that is a classic now, and it is called Blockus Trigon. Now, in regular Blockus, you're going to have a bunch of different shaped uh, tiles uh, similar to Tetris, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing them on a board, and the rule is you have to connect one of your tiles to another in order to place it there. So you're trying to get all of your tiles on the board, but at the same time, you're trying to keep your opponent from being able to put his on the board as well. So a lot of back and forth offense and defense going on in this game. With Blockus Trigon, all the pieces are more triangular shaped, and it's harder because you can only fit the pieces on a board in a certain way. The rules are still the same, but it's a lot more challenging. Uh, my wife and I love to play Blockus. We have Blockus, uh, I think it's Duo, where it's just for two players, and that's a game we like to play a lot. Blockus Trigon is definitely a good game if you like challenging games. Number 25 is a Grail game, and it is It From The Pit. Now, this is a game my friend Matt talked to me about a while back, and I had to get this game. I finally was able to get my hands on it, and here's the gist of it. You've got a nice 3D board uh, that has a big little pit in the middle, and this is where you're going to be placing the electronic component, it. Now, what it's going to be doing is he's going to be reaching his arm out on occasion on this path that surrounds him, and uh, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to go around this board with one of your four explorers and try to get to the treasure chest that is on the other side. Now there's two paths. You can take the safe way, which takes longer to get to the treasure chest, or you can take the dangerous way, which uh, increases your chances of getting caught by it. Uh, this is a fast-paced game. This game is hilarious to play because um, it's almost like you're watching a horse race or something like that. And people are like going, go, 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 go. And they're hoping that it doesn't hit them. And so many times it comes like just so close to hitting you. And you're just breathing a sigh of relief. Uh, but at the same time, he may end up scraping by you. And he may knock your piece around. And you have to figure out where it's going to go. And, uh, you know, and then you got to figure out which path you want to go. But this game is a lot of fun. Uh, now, you have to play this game with more than two players. Or if you play with two players, I would suggest just using two teams of explorers. So that way you'd have four on there. It just makes the game better. Uh, um, if you can get, grab a copy of this somewhere, I would highly recommend it. It from the pit. Number 24 is a game that is a kid's game, but it is a fun game, and it is called the McDonald's game. Now, in the McDonald's game, uh, you are going to uh, try to reach a certain amount of points first, and the way you're going to be doing this is by fulfilling menus. Now, while you're going around the board, you've got a whole bunch of food items in a tray. I think there's eight of them, like a hamburger and a cheeseburger. And as you're going around the board, you're going to have an option of getting extras. Uh, that you might need to fill out the orders. Now, when an order card gets read out, uh, someone could say two hamburgers, two cheeseburgers, three shakes, or something like that, and then everybody is going to try as fast as they can to fulfill the order, but they have to try to remember the order, which is the best part of this game. Now, on occasion, you may end up getting a menu card that's going to say, wait, change the number of cheeseburgers, or wait, add this to it. So that's going to make it even more challenging. This is a lot of fun. And whenever you think you have the menu fulfilled, you're going to drop a marble into the middle, and uh, the first marble is going to get checked. If they're right, they're going to go and get the points. If they're wrong, it goes on to the next one, etc. A lot of fun, this game. Uh, this is just one of those kids' games that just surprises you. Um, it's a lot of fun. Now, I did make an expansion version of this, and my friend Matt came up with the idea of this. And basically, I have a breakfast menu, and I also have another version that has a bigger menu or it has a much bigger menu and it also has the um discontinued items like the mcdlt and things like that that you can get extra points for uh i haven't even had a chance to try it out yet but uh hopefully my friend matt will try it out and hopefully he'll like it but anyway good game the mcdonald's game number 23 is one of the largest board games that i have and it is called torpedo run now, Torpedo Run has this huge board that basically goes on the floor, and you've got a bunch of these different ships that have triggers in different parts of it. And what you're going to be doing is you've got this sub that's got these discs on there, and you're going to be shooting them towards your opponent's ships, trying to hit all of the different trigger points. Now, whenever it hits those triggers, part of the ship is going to explode, which is really cool. Uh, now, you're also going to have to go grab your ships back and uh, just start shooting again, and it's just going to keep going on like this until somebody ends up winning. Uh, this is another fast, chaotic game, uh, definitely one that's a lot of fun, uh, and it's kind of hard to get those targets. I mean, sometimes you might actually get the disc in there some, but it's not in there enough, and so you have to hit the disc again in order to get the thing fired off. Now, this thing has a slight tendency to break. Some of the parts do, um, and so that's just something you have to keep in mind. Uh, but other than that, it's a really fun game, Torpedo Run. 
Number 22 is a car dealership game, and it is called Dealer's Choice. Now, in Dealer's Choice, there are going to be a whole bunch of cars uh, that you're going to have access to, and you're basically be running a car lot. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be buying cars, selling cars, trading cars with people, trying to uh, make the most amount of money. Now, you're going to have a blue book that's going to have all these cars in there, and it's going to tell you how much the cars are really worth. Now, each of the cars are going to have a value on them themselves, but the blue book is really funny because when you look at it, it could say something like, uh, there was a dog that pooped in the car or something like that, and it's worth, like, say, way less than it should be or it could be a vintage model or something like that but only you are going to know that where the game really shines is when you're able to sabotage your opponents uh there's a card that says force sale so you can force an opponent to buy one of your cards and then there's another card that says uh set car on fire or steal car or something like that there's a whole bunch of these little cards in there and there's also insurance cards that you can buy that are pretty funny uh but this is a really fun willing and dealing game if you like willing and dealing games this is a really really good one it's a lot of fun to play and it can get really funny sometimes. Dealer's choice. And finally, number 21 is a card game, and it is called Dragon Master. Now, Dragon Master, the artwork was made by the same guy that did the artwork for Dark Tower. Uh, the cards look absolutely fantastic. Um, there's four different suits, and this is basically a trick-taking game, uh, but it involves getting jewels. Now, everybody is going to have the opportunity to be the Dragon Master for five hands. And ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to force players to play cards that are going to penalize them. Uh, and now you're going to have five different types of hands that you can choose from after all the cards are dealt out. Um, and depending on what you have in your hand, you're going to just choose what's is best for you. So, for example, uh, there is one that says first and last trick. Meaning that if uh, a certain player wins the first trick, they're going to get penalized. And, and if someone wins the last trick, they're also going to get penalized and they're going to have to uh, pay you jewels. And then afterwards, it's going to go on to the next person. Now, you can also steal uh, the Dragon Master ability from somebody if you are able to do the opposite of what the Dragon Master is trying to do. So there's a lot of cool things about this game. Um, now, the only thing is, is that you only have one opportunity to be the Dragon Master for those five turns unless you steal it. So if someone ends up stealing it early, then it's going to be really hard to catch up. Now, that's an easy fix uh, if you want to do a house rule with that. Um, but this is a fantastic game if you like trick-taking games. Um, it's called Dragon Master. Okay, folks, that does it for me this time. I will see you next for numbers 20 through 11. Take care. Keep on gaming.